Money Heist Season 3 begins by showing a man named Arturo, giving a lecture at a conference to tell his experience as a prisoner and witness to the biggest robbery in history that occurred several years earlier. He is obsessed with the success of a group of robbers led by a genius professor who is none other than Sergio. However, the public still doesn't know where the professional robber group is. Some assumed they were currently living on the run and had to live in hiding. In reality, the robbers were now enjoying their lives separately with the money they had robbed before. Tokyo When Rio chose to live on an island called the Gunayala Archipelago, Helsinki and Nairobi decided to live in one of the regions in Argentina called La Pampa. Meanwhile, Denver and Monica live happily in Indonesia. Tokyo who lived in Gunayala Islands, started to feel bored and wanted to feel the atmosphere of the crowds in the middle of the city again. Therefore, she asked Rio for permission so she could go to the city for some time. Before they parted, Rio gave Tokyo a satellite phone to stay connected to each other. He advised her to always contact him and let him know as soon as she arrived in the city. After arriving and staying a few days in the city center, Tokyo got lost in the fun of the city bustle and forgot to contact Rio. Rio, who felt anxious and worried, immediately tried to contact Tokyo to ensure she was okay. However, unbeknownst to them, security intelligence officers had managed to capture their communication signals. They have managed to trace Tokyo and Rio's whereabouts in a short time. Colonel Prieto, who received news of the whereabouts of Tokyo and Rio, immediately mobilized his subordinates to arrest them. Meanwhile, Tokyo and Rio, who were still talking to each other, didn't realize that Colonel Prieto's subordinates were currently coming to their location. During the conversation, Rio saw several police patrol boats moving toward the island where he was. He immediately warned Tokyo to run away as far as possible to avoid being chased by the police. Hearing this, she immediately ran away from the police and looked for a hiding place. Tokyo, who has a lot of experience being a fugitive, managed to escape and chose to hide in a forest in the middle of the city. Unfortunately, Rio, surrounded by patrol boats, couldn't escape and decided to turn himself in. After that, Tokyo, remembering the professor's message about an emergency number they could call in a pinch, decided to dial that number. Shortly after making a call to the number, she was picked up by someone and brought to the country of Thailand. Arriving in Thailand, Tokyo is finally able to meet Professor. She realizes Professor has lived with Raquel and her family in Palawan for the past few years. Tokyo, at first, was still doubtful and thought that Raquel would betray them as she betrayed the police. Raquel was previously one of the intelligence commanders of the Spanish police, but she decides to join Professor after she falls in love with him. Seeing that Tokyo still doesn't trust her, Professor tries to convince Tokyo that now Raquel is on their side and will not betray them. After the tension between Tokyo and Raquel began to subside, Tokyo then told Professor about Rio's arrest. She then explained that she felt there was something odd about Rio's arrest, because until now, there has been no media coverage about him. Hearing this, Raquel assumed that Rio was currently being tortured by several police officers to extract information from him. Professor, feeling angry that one of his best members had been unfairly arrested, decides to gather all his other members and create a plan to save Rio. Raquel's prediction proved correct. Rio was currently being tied up with iron chains and drugs so that he could be tortured all over his body. A few days later, Professor managed to gather all his members, namely Denver, Monica, Nairobi, and Helsinki. That night, they had dinner together and told each other about their respective lives over the past few years. Then, Tokyo told about Rio's unlawful and arbitrary arrest by the police. Hearing this, all the other members looked shocked and sad. Professor then explained the reason for gathering all the members. He wanted all his members to help him to save Rio. However, Denver, who no longer wanted to deal with the intelligence and police, objected to the plan. Moreover, he now has a child with Monica, so he doesn't want to do anything that could harm his child. Raquel suddenly came out during their conversation and introduced herself as a new member of their group of robbers. Professor then said they are all a family that should help each other. He then reminded them of the sacrifices made by Berlin, Moscow, and Oslo. The deaths of three of their members during a robbery mission a few years ago still leave sadness in their hearts. After listening to Professor's explanation, the other members were touched and finally decided to join the Rio rescue mission this time. Even though Professor knows that this mission will be quite risky, he will try to find the best plan and strategy to save Rio. In this mission, Professor decided to invite all his members to join the mission of robbery of national gold reserves in a national bank in Spain. He believes that with a robbery mission of this magnitude, their group will be able to attract the attention of the police and national intelligence. The scene switched to five years ago when Professor and Berlin talked together in a church. They had known each other for a long time and even considered each other brothers. 
In the church's basement, Berlin built a secret base with another colleague named Paul Ermo. It was at that time that Professor met Paul Ermo for the first time. Berlin and Paul Ermo then explained to Professor their plan to rob gold at a national bank located in Spain. From this incident, it can be seen that Professor chose this Spanish bank gold robbery plan to fulfill the dream that had been dreamed of by Berlin in the past. The scene changes to the present, where Professor gives a short lecture on all his plans to all his members to carry out this national gold robbery smoothly. Professor, who is known to be a genius, began to give directions to each member so that this mission could run optimally. Shortly after, the day of the great robbery had now arrived. On that day, a giant hot air balloon flew into the city center and released thousands of bills totaling 140 million euros. This is part of the professor's plan to create a commotion in the city streets and outwit the police officers. During the chaos, Professor suddenly appeared on the big screen in the middle of the city and announced that Rio was unfairly arrested and tortured by the police. Professor promises to fight the police and get Rio the justice he deserves. Hearing this, the public became annoyed and angry with the police because they had violated the law and violated the police's duty as a community protector. At the same time, Colonel Prieto, who saw the announcement, immediately realized that there would be another big robbery, so he contacted his subordinates to closely guard the entire city. On the other hand, Paul Ermo, who was sent by Professor to lead his robbery group, is preparing vehicles and weapons with the other members. Meanwhile, Professors and Raquel will serve as supervisors who will monitor all the movements of their members and give orders from within the headquarters. In addition, the hacker position that was usually filled by Rio has now been replaced by 65 hackers in Islamabad, Pakistan, to intercept all communications made by the Spanish police. After receiving information from the military camp, Professor immediately ordered all his members to move toward the National Bank under the guise of a group of military police who had previously been assigned to guard the National Bank. On their way, Tokyo and the other members see that the Spanish people are now starting to disagree with the government and are more supportive of their group of robbers. Since their group succeeded in revealing the government's atrocities and abuse of power, Spaniards began to sympathize with the group of robbers led by Professor. The scene switches to when Professor and the others are discussing plans for a national gold robbery several years earlier. In devising the plan at the time, Professor seemed doubtful if Berlin and Palermo's national gold robbery strategy would work. The gold safe in the Spanish National Bank is located 48 meters below ground level. If the safe door detects a touch, the safety water will automatically enter the contents of the safe. Meanwhile, all the members of the robbery group have now arrived in front of the Spanish National Bank. They gain access to the bank because of the military disguise and sabotage of their carried out military communications. Before entering the bank building, all members set several time bombs at the main door in the area around the building. After all the members entered the building, Paul Ermo then detonated all the bombs to activate the bank building's security system, and all doors would be automatically locked. Not long after, Tokyo and Nairobi were assigned to take the bank governor hostage. Even though he was heavily guarded by several security officers, Tokyo and Nairobi could still capture and hold him with Tokyo's clever tactics. Meanwhile, Paul Ermo and other members gathered all bank customers and employees in the main hall. At first, they thought they were being evacuated by official military officers assigned by the government. However, when Paul Ermo and other members began to reveal their disguises and show their identity jackets as robbers, all bank customers and employees began to fear and immediately tried to protect themselves. Tokyo and Nairobi, who had managed to defeat several security officers and held the bank governor hostage, forced the remaining governor's guards to retreat and let them go with the governor. But when Tokyo, Nairobi, and the bank governor arrived at the elevator, the governor suddenly rebelled and broke free from Tokyo's grip. As a result, Tokyo and Nairobi failed to bring in the bank governor and were surrounded by several of the governor's other guards. Fortunately, Helsinki and Palermo arrived to help them escape from the guards. The shootout between the robbers and the bank governor's guards was unavoidable. Although the robbers finally won against some of the governor's guards, Palermo had to suffer a serious injury to his eye. After capturing all of the bank governor's guards, the rest of the robbers immediately evacuated Palermo and provided medical assistance to him. Due to the many shards of glass that entered Paul Ermo's eyes, he could not see anything. So Monica and Tokyo must immediately remove all the broken glass from Paul Ermo's eye so that his eye can be treated. Meanwhile, Nairobi and several other members are assigned to complete the most important mission to open the gold vault under the bank's ground. To achieve this mission, Nairobi will be assisted by a man named Bogota, a member of the new robbery group. He then brought several members of his subordinates who are experienced in opening safe doors with a high level of security. 
On the other hand, a man named Colonel Tamio came to the police tent in front of the bank building to lead the investigation of this national bank robbery. This is because Colonel Prieto, who previously served as commander of the investigation, is being deactivated. While the police investigation inspector previously filled by Raquel has now been replaced by a pregnant woman named Instructor Sierra. Unlike Raquel, Instructor Sierra is known as a cruel officer and dares to torture prisoners to obtain information. Back in, Nairobi Bogota and the rest of the bandits are trying to break into the doors of the gold safe made of steel. Nairobi explained to the other members that they only had 16 minutes to get through the door of the gold vault before the water from the vault filled the entire gold vault. After successfully making a hole in the safe door, Nairobi and other members immediately installed a giant oxygen cylinder to enter the gold storage room. After Nairobi managed to get into the gold storage room and saw a lot of gold bars in the room, she looked happy and immediately showed the gold bars to the other members. Now their most important mission has been successfully completed. Elsewhere, Colonel Tamayo, who had analyzed the robberies of Professor's group several years ago, was extremely thorough and careful. He then ordered all members of the police in the headquarters to collect all their cell phones so that their communications would not be intercepted by Professor's hacker team. After that, he asked members of the police special forces to guard the bank building because the bank door would automatically open after one hour of locking. Special forces will use this opportunity to break into the bank building and attack all the robbers. At the same time, Professor ordered all the other members to get ready because he would start contacting the police for negotiations. In this negotiation, it was quite difficult to persuade the police to cooperate with Professor, because Colonel Tamayo, the investigation commander, was not the type of person who was easily intimidated like Colonel Prieto. Colonel Tamayo explained to Professor that he had made so many observations on the patterns and tactics of robbery carried out by Professor's group in the past few years that he was not easily intimidated by Professor's threats. Shortly after, Arturo was invited by the police to help provide information about each member of the robbery group. Colonel Tamayo will focus more on targeting the group's chief executive, Palermo. Arturo, who actually didn't know much about the members of the robbery group, only assumed by saying that the leader who replaced Berlin this time was Denver. At the same time, Palermo and Nairobi are holding hostages and forcing the bank governor to open a secret door in the safe. But the bank governor refused to enter the bank because the items stored behind the secret door were very important. This infuriated Denver and immediately pushed him. Unfortunately, the bank governor fell unconscious because his head hit the metal door behind him. Seeing this, Nairobi immediately asked the other members to take medical equipment so she could save him. She said that if he was not dealt with immediately, he would have a heart attack, resulting in death. Bogota, realizing that the bank governor would not be able to help open the secret door, finally decided to detonate the secret door with his homemade explosives. After successfully opening the secret door, he took out several red suitcases which seemed much more valuable than the gold in the safe. An hour after, the bank building door was locked. Finally, the main door automatically opened. When Colonel Tamiya was about to order the police special forces to attack, Tokyo directed some prisoners who had changed clothes like them to come out in front of the bank building to buy time. A few minutes later, Denver ran from the safe, carrying two red suitcases that had previously been taken from the secret room. He signaled to the police and showed two red suitcases in his hands. Colonel Tamayo, who knew that the red suitcase contained important documents belonging to the state, immediately ordered the police special forces to retreat. If the document is leaked and spread, it will risk triggering a war between countries. Colonel Tamayo decided to call off his special forces attack, convinced that the government would be furious if the state secrets were leaked. Hearing this, Professor, Sergio, and Raquel were happy that their plan had gone well. Elsewhere. Colonel Tamayo invited several government officials to discuss the state documents in the red suitcase and try to find a solution. From the discussion results, they decided to focus more on finding the whereabouts of Professor and Raquel so that they could threaten the group of robbers inside the bank building. Shortly after that, Instructor Sierra, who was previously still overseas, had now arrived in Spain and decided to come to the police headquarters operated by Colonel Tamayo. Professor and Raquel were very relieved and happy because the arrival of Instructor Sierra in Spain meant that Rio had arrived in Spain as well. During Colonel Tamayo's efforts to find the whereabouts of Professor and Raquel, Colonel Tamayo's subordinate named Angel reported that he detected a suspicious signal that most likely came from Professor's phone signal. Hearing that, Colonel Tamayo ordered him to go in the direction where the signal was coming from. Not long after, Professor again contacted the police to continue negotiations but the person who answered his call was not Colonel Tamayo but Instructor Sierra. Sierra answered the call very casually and called for Raquel to communicate with her. 
it turns out that she is planning to threaten Raquel by saying that she already knows the whereabouts of her mother and daughter. Hearing this, Raquel was shocked and began to worry about the state of her beloved family. The threat managed to intimidate Raquel. She then scolds Professor and warns him about Instructor Sierra's cunning and cruelty. She took Instructor Sierra's threat to be a very serious one. After Instructor Sierra joined Colonel Tamayo's operation, she provided many brilliant ideas that could help make the negotiation process easier and more effective. She can even solve the problem of state documents that have now been stolen by robber groups by suggesting that the government provide false information regarding state documents. In that way, the public will not believe all the secret state documents that will be spread by the robber group. Knowing this, Professor immediately contacted Palermo to prepare with other members because he was sure that Colonel Tamayo would send special forces to forcibly break into the bank building. On the way to the city center, Professor decided to swerve and take a different route because he suspected a sedan that had been following him for a long time. But sadly, it ended up getting his tires stuck in the mud and his radio antenna falling out of the car. When he was trying to push his car to get out of the mud basin, suddenly some local residents began to appear and approach him. The residents who saw Professor's face immediately recognized him as the leader of a group of robbers currently viral in the media. Fortunately, the resident was willing to help Professor push his car which was stuck in the mud. At that moment, Professor saw a police patrol car moving towards his car. Professor and Raquel immediately got into the car and hid in a secret room in the car's trunk. Arriving there, the police officer checked Professor's car because he saw the suspicious behavior of the residents. Fortunately, one of the residents there managed to convince the police officer that the car was his family's car. The police officer immediately believed and instead helped the residents drag Professor's car from the mud. After the police officer left, Professor and Raquel immediately got out of the car and thanked the residents by giving them some money. After knowing that the police are starting to suspect Professor's van, Raquel suggests that they replace their car with another one. Meanwhile, Paul Hermo gathered all members of the robbers for a brief meeting. He then told all members to prepare for an attack from the police special forces that Colonel Tamayo would soon send. He told the other members to fight the police force with all their prepared weapons. Hearing that, Tokyo objected because she was sure that Professor had never allowed members of the group of robbers to kill anyone. However, the other members disagreed with her and chose to follow Paul Hermo's orders considering the current situation was getting out of control. Shortly after, the police special forces spread toxic fumes into the bank building through ventilation holes. After confirming that the ventilation was empty, Colonel Tamayo ordered several special forces police to enter through the ventilation in the roof of the building. One of the professor's spies outside the building saw this and immediately reported it to Professor. Thus, Palermo and the other members were finally able to prepare themselves to face them. Moments later, Professor contacts Instructor Sierra to say that the police special forces that Colonel Tamayo had sent have been captured and held hostage by the group of robbers. To prove this, he sends a video of the arrest of the police special forces to the investigation headquarters. He then offered the police to exchange some prisoners and some special forces officers with Rio. Instructor Sierra had no other choice but to accept the offer as Colonel Tamayo kept pushing her. She immediately picked up Rio, who had been forced to sleep for days using anesthetics. After preparing Rio, Instructor Sierra immediately took him to the National Bank building. Tokyo, who saw Rio's arrival from behind the window was pleased. The people who gathered around the National Bank building were happy and supported Rio's return to the group of robbers. Rio immediately ran into the bank building together with the release of several prisoners and several police special forces. When Rio arrived at the bank building, Tokyo immediately hugged him, and the other members welcomed him with joy. Professor is now relieved that Rio has been freed from the torture of the police. Funnily enough, Arturo even entered the bank building when some prisoners ran out. He still loves Monica very much and hopes that she is willing to come back with him. In the previous season, Arturo and Monica did have a relationship as a couple before they finally separated a few years ago. Professor then contacted Rio and asked some questions. Professor concluded that the police had installed wiretaps on Rio's body from all the answers he gave. So he immediately ordered the other members to remove the bug embedded in Rio's body. Meanwhile, at the investigation headquarters, Instructor Sierra proposes the idea of holding a contest for the public. The police will give a prize money of 10 million euros to anyone who manages to catch or report the whereabouts of Professor and Raquel. With this competition, she believes it will be easier for the police to find them. On the other hand, Angel, who had previously been sent to look for the whereabouts of the signal that was thought to be from Professor's phone, managed to find the whereabouts of Professor's car. That means Professor and Raquel are currently not far from that location. The scene switches to the inside of the National Bank building. 
Nairobi, Tokyo, and other members try to do surgery on Ryo's body to remove the wiretapping device from him. Professor had already predicted the possibility of a bug that would be implanted in Ryo's body by the police, so he had already prepared his members to track down the whereabouts of the tapping device. They will later use the wiretapping device to trap the police. Elsewhere, it turns out that drones from the police have now been able to find the whereabouts of Professor's car. Professor and Raquel, who realized this, immediately decided to run separately and hide in a tree. Professor had already prepared an escape plan if the police managed to track down his car one day. Unfortunately, the plan didn't go smoothly because Raquel had difficulty climbing the tree, and she was already quite close to the police officers. Therefore, she decided to run towards the settlement and hide in a ranch stable. Angel, who has now found the whereabouts of Professor's car, immediately mobilized his entire police force to search the forest area around the location where the car was found. Professor is safe because he has climbed a fairly tall tree and camouflaged himself. Meanwhile, Raquel hides behind a box of hay on the ranch. This was her first experience being a fugitive from the police, so she felt anxious and frightened. Therefore, Professor tries to calm her down through their radio communication. Professor contacts Paul Irmo and orders him to carry out Alcatraz's plan. Alcatraz's plan is a backup plan that will only be carried out when Professor and Raquel are in danger. That's why Professor needed a diversion so that the police would no longer focus on him. Hearing Professor's orders, Paul Irmo immediately gathered the other members so they could devise a strategy to save Professor and Raquel. Helsinki was then assigned to take a bug removed from Rio's body to be attached to a mouse so that the police thought that the robbers were on the run. As a result, the police were really caught in a trap because the police officer they had sent to look in the direction of the tapper's signal only found a mouse. This incident made Colonel Tameo feel very angry and feel made fun of. Elsewhere, Raquel was caught by two residents who owned the ranch. The owner of the farm, who had heard of the competition being held by the police, said he would report Raquel's whereabouts to the police to win a prize of 10 million euros. Feeling cornered, Raquel tried hard to convince him that the police would never give the 10 million euros in return because the competition was just a gimmick. She then offers money to him if they are willing to protect and hide her. Unfortunately, Raquel's efforts fail because the police have arrived at the farm. Meanwhile, Instructor Sierra, annoyed at having been tricked by the group of robbers, decides to use her secret plan. She placed a blue teddy bear in front of the National Bank building for the robbers to take the teddy bear. Paul Irmo and the other members who felt confused decided to take the doll and open the contents of the doll. Nairobi, who realized the doll was a keepsake that she had given to her son, immediately grabbed the cell phone taken out of the doll. It turns out that Instructor Sierra decided to use the teddy bear to threaten her. She then led Nairobi's son to walk to the front of the bank building so that Nairobi could see her son after being separated for a long time. Unfortunately, it was all part of Instructor Sierra's plan to kill Nairobi with the sniper fire she had prepared. Nairobi fell limp due to the bullet aimed right at her chest. This action showed the ruthlessness of Instructor Sierra, who did not hesitate to kill her opponent. Shortly after, Instructor Sierra received a report from another member of the police force that they had managed to find Raquel's whereabouts. The professor who knows this immediately comes out of hiding and runs to Raquel's whereabouts to save her. At the same time, police officers start pointing guns at Raquel and threaten her to tell him where Professor Sergio is. Raquel, who doesn't want to betray her boyfriend, persists by saying she doesn't know of Professor's whereabouts. When Professor was close enough to the ranch barn, he heard gunshots several times. Hearing this, he immediately fell limp because he thought the police had killed Raquel the one he loved. Elsewhere, Palermo ordered the other members to prepare with all the heavy weapons. They had to fight the special forces sent by Colonel Tamayo. Tokyo quickly grabbed a bazooka and pointed it at a tank car driven by special forces. Now the group of robbers no longer cares about the lives of police officers because they have dared to harm Nairobi. The explosion from the bazooka instantly killed most of the members of the special forces. This incident surprised Colonel Tamayo because he did not expect that a group of robbers would dare to do that. This is actually not an easy thing for Professor and all members of the robbery group because they have violated an important rule that they have created themselves. Namely, it is forbidden to kill anyone. This season ends by showing Raquel, who is still alive and being taken by the police to a patrol car. It was all part of Instructor Sierra's plan to make Professor falter, considering that Raquel was the one he loved. Instructor Sierra used the same method Professor used to make false threats. Then, what will Professor Sergio plan to do next? all of which will be answered in the next Money Heist season series. The moral that can be learned this time is, it teaches us a lot about negotiation strategies and clever ways to deal with times of crisis. Besides all that, this series teaches about mutual trust and loyalty that is very close among its members. 
In this case, we are reminded of how the power possessed by law enforcement officers can be arbitrarily abused solely to achieve their personal goals.